Okay, now I'd like to talk about high-speed internet. There's things like uh, Fios from Verizon, uh, cable internet from like Time Warner or Roadrunner and different other providers, and DSL, which you don't really see that much anymore, except you kind of do, but we'll get to that in a minute. So broadband, as they call it, uh, broadband internet, it, it's basically defined as an internet connection that's at least 256 kilobits per second. Broadband basically just means that it's a multi-range communication. That means that it's sort of covering a wide signal range. So as opposed to a narrow band, which would be like a low, like a single frequency, broadband it more refers to covering a wide frequency. It's, it's not really that important. High speed is a little bit of a misnomer for high speed internet if you look at it on kind of a global scale. According to a Bloomberg reports that USA ranks number 11 in the world for average internet speed. What's number one, you might ask? Hong Kong. They have the fastest internet in the world, so if you want to you know, have incredibly quick internet, move to Hong Kong. Um, so speed, what do we mean when we talk about speed? So 36.6 megabits is the average in the states. Uh, one place you can test this is if you go to speedtest.net and I actually want to show you what that looks like. Go there right now. So if you go to www.speedtest.net it brings up this website like what service provider you are and it records your external IP address. So you just click begin test and it goes through this whole process. It kind of judges your ping speed from your location to a server, checks your download speed, and then it'll check your upload speed. So you can see it gives a kind of a nice little graphic display and depending on what's going on the speed can be faster or slower. When I did this before um, I had a much, maybe not much, but I had a faster download speed. This is kind of nice if you want to check your uh, internet providers um, sort of what they're actually delivering versus what they promise. Unfortunately, the way service contracts are written, this doesn't serve as evidence that they're not living up to their end of their bargain. Like if they sit, promised you, you know, 50 megabits down, that's this this download speed, and you test out at 22.5, like I am right now, if you call them up and say, hey, you know, I, I went to speedtest.net and this is what I saw, they'll cite your contract, at least this is what they did to me, where it says it's up to whatever their speed is. So there's really no holding them to that. And there's so much uh, that can contribute to a slower internet speed that really it's not worth it. So anyway, speedtest.net. So 22.6 down and 2.3 megabits up. That's what I got last time. And you can see that's pretty close to what I have now. Actually, right now it's a little bit faster. Not Well, actually it's not. Right now it's a little bit slower. And that's primarily most likely due to having more people online right now than when I wrote this slide. And when I did it before, I had a 15 millisecond ping. Now I have a 19 millisecond ping. We'll talk about that later. That's actually, of these statistics, that's maybe the more telling one. But like I said, we'll get to that in a minute. So what does all this mean? Download, upload, ping, I don't, I don't know what any of this means, you might be saying. So we're going to cover all that. So download speed. This is how fast data can be retrieved from a particular location. There are so many things that affect this speed. If you're on cable, how many other people are using the service at the time, how far away the actual server is. Faster is better with download speed almost universally. There's never going to be a time when you want a slower download speed. The only time that's really uh, an issue is if you want to save some money on your uh, monthly bill for internet. For streaming movies, you definitely need a pretty fast internet connection. If you want to download large files like I don't know if, say, you're buying digital movies from Amazon and you want to download those, uh, obviously a faster internet connection means that you'll be able to download those faster. And obviously if you're streaming movies through like Netflix or Amazon Instant or Hulu, you can uh, obviously a faster download speed means you'll have access to better quality media. 
So if you want to play games online, this is also important because it, that relies on pulling information from a server uh, to sort of, it's all kinds of game data, like where your uh, other players are located, information about the map, that's very important. Upload speed is actually also very important when you're playing games. So to put this into a little bit of perspective, 22.6 megabits per second. That's 2.825 megabytes per second. So that's kind of the difference. And that's one of the main reasons why internet speed is listed in bits, not bytes per second. Because if you're going to go buy an internet connection, you're going to be more interested in the bigger number. And that's just marketing more than anything. Even though files don't usually measure their size in bits you measure them in bytes but anyway this means a typical picture that's about 299 kilobytes like this picture of my cat would take roughly zero seconds on a 22.6 megabit connection <laughs> so a bigger file say a video of my cat 76.4 megabytes that takes about 27 seconds on the connection that I have here so you can see how this would make a huge difference so say if it was slower say if it was half that speed it would take you know twice as long so if i had a, a 13 megabit down it would take you know 54 seconds which doesn't seem like a lot but it can start adding up when you start getting into like high def movies and things so remember the internet is listed in bits per second not bytes that's the really big thing to take away here so if you had a 22.6 megabyte per second connection that video would take about two seconds to download that that'd be amazing upload speed typically this doesn't matter that much it's not that important because usually um, you're just sending information to a server like a small amount of information that's a request for a resource so you're just sending a little teeny bit of, bit of information and saying hey I want you know this file or I want this web page and then you download things so download speed is more important as the way we access and use the internet changes this also is changing um, for example if you're posting videos to YouTube it's very important just as an aside each video I post typically has a 1 to 2 ratio of time to upload so a 15 minute video takes about 30 minutes to upload it kinda stinks I do a lot of waiting well, one thing to note is as time changes, as we get into more cloud services where we're offloading data processing to act to remote servers, uploading information becomes more and more important. So ping, we saw that value that said ping. So this ping, what does this mean? Well, ping refers to two things. It's a message. It's a, a small piece of information. Uh, that your com a message it's a small piece of information sent from your computer to a server it's also a program there's a service on just about every computer since about 1960 called ping that sends these messages so it refers to both the program and the message so the message is a very very basic message it's one of the most basic a computer can send it basically it consists of your address that's the IP address which we'll talk about later and a request to send information back it's used to measure the round trip time to a destination so I, I, I gotta stress that that's what it's used for you send a ping message out to a server and then that server sends that right back and it measures the time it takes for that signal to to go out and come back it's used to test sort of how good your internet connection is not necessarily the speed it does measure the speed of the ping and a faster ping means you have a better connection so ping what that server that you send it to reads it and sends it back the ping time is the amount of time this process takes. This is mostly handled by hardware, so it's fast. What I mean by that is an operating system like this one here that we're looking at, it runs on top of hardware, and there's a bunch of other processes that have to happen in order for the operating system to appear. Ping doesn't rely on any of that. Ping is handled almost completely by hardware. Most of the time it doesn't even go to the processor. It just hits some networking hardware and responds to from there. It's very, very, they call it low level, and it's because of that it's very, very fast. You may have heard of a DDoS attack or distributed, de distributed denial of service attack. 
This is essentially uh, sending millions of ping requests to a server. And so it overloads that server's ability to respond to anything else. It's essentially, you can think of it as having a whole bunch of people like calling your name in a room. You're not going to be able to hear anything but that. Uh, you can also kind of think of it as just like a freeway. If you put too many cars on the freeway, everything stops moving and you can't get to your exit. This consumes essentially all of the capacity of the server to respond. So because of this, many servers will reject pings sent frequently from the same computer. So if the same computer is sending a ping request over and over and over again in a really short amount of time, and we're talking nanoseconds, not, not like, you know, if you send one every five seconds, that's nothing. Any computer can handle that. I'm talking about thousands a second. Um, oftentimes it'll reject those because that is, well, whether it's intended to or not, it's a, a DDoS attack. So this gets into, I, again, I keep talking about IP addresses, um, and we'll get to that in a little bit. So ping. Ping is also the name of a network utility that can be used to measure this connectivity. It's essentially the program that sends the ping message. So now I'd like to do a demo of that. So this is what ping looks like. Uh, when you run it from a terminal on a Mac or a Unix-based system. You can do something similar on uh, a Windows machine. You basically go to the command prompt and type ping in an address. On a Windows machine, it defaults to only four packets. So each of these lines represents a packet of information that's being sent to google.com. And it goes to Google and it comes back. So you can see if we stop it, if we stop the process, we get this little summary. So this is actually pretty good because we have some that didn't work. So this one went out and it didn't make it. So this packet failed. So we can see that we sent 30 packets, 29 were received back. So that's a 3.3% packet loss. So the round trip min, minimum time, average time, max time, and the standard deviation between them are 12.168 milliseconds, 22. You can read that. So basically what this is telling us is that our average transit time to go to the server at Google and come back is about 22 milliseconds, which isn't that great. Um, ideally, you'd want something in about the 15 millisecond range. Uh, right now, you know, it's um, kind of early morning on a weekend. I think everybody is using their internet right now, so it's running a little bit slow. But we'll get into that more in a second. So, wireless. 